Hi everyone, welcome back to our Prisma series. Today, we are going to explore the Prisma Migrate commands in more detail. We will learn how to reset a database, what is a shadow database, how to see the database with data after running all migrations, how to roll back a migration if it fails, and how to use Migrate for production. These commands and concepts are super important if you are developing data intensive applications. So I invite you to join me on this. I hope you enjoy. In our previous video, we have used the command Prisma Migrate Dev to generate and apply migrations from the schema Prisma file. Let me show you the database status at the end of our last video. Note that we have two migrations, the first to create the patient and doctor tables, and the second to create the clinic table. Then we have created two patients. Another command to be used only in development is the Prisma Migrate Reset. This command reverts the database to its initial state before any migrations were applied and then apply all migrations. But keep in mind that all data is going to be lost. Let's try it. It asks to confirm, warning that all data will be lost. There is a force option in case you want to skip this confirmation. Now we should have the database after running all migrations, but with no data. Let's check it. The reset command can be useful if you are running end-to-end -end or integration tests. These commands use a shadow database. A shadow database, also known as a replica or secondary database, mirrors the data and changes from a primary or source database. In Prisma, if you are using a local database, Prisma will create and delete a temporary shadow database each time you will run Migrate Dev and Migrate Reset. If the database is cloud hosted, then it must be created manually. For that, we need to add a second environment variable to indicate the shadow database URL. And we need to set user permissions so we can create, alter and drop tables. For example, for Postgres, the user must be a super user or have the create database privilege. In this video, I'm using the same local Postgres running as a Docker container we set in our first video. Another interesting feature in migration tools is the ability to seed the database. In other words, populate the database with an initial set of data after run all migrations. Keep in mind that you must review this file after each migration to be sure that the data to be inserted is going to be still valid after the last migration. As the Prisma directory is under version control, we can always track the changes history. In Prisma, we need to create a seed file under the Prisma directory. It's a TypeScript file with the functions to change the database. In our case, I moved the code we had used in the index file of our first video to the seed file. Note, however, that I'm just using the create patient function. Now we need to add the script seed in a Prisma key of the package JSON. When running migrate dev and reset commands, the database seeding is done automatically. Let's test this using the migrate reset command. Note that the seed command has been executed. We can check the data using Prisma Studio. Yes, it worked as expected. Until now, we have seen how to add new migrations, also known as app migrations. But, and if you want to roll back a migration, also known as a down migration, the down migration allows to reverse the schema changes in the corresponding up migration file when the last migration failed. So we need to create a down migration file for each new up migration file. We can do this manually 
but Prisma offers the migrate diff command. It compares the current edit schema with the schema after the last migration and generates the corresponding SQL script file. But before doing that, we need first to change our data model. For that, we are going to add the new entity specialization. There are two options we can use with the diff command. Two migrations when we are using a shadow database and two schema data source when we are not using a shadow database. So in our case, we are using the option to schema data source. Note that we are redirecting the output to the down SQL file. As we still don't have the new migration, we are putting it in the root project for now. Let's look its content. We have just this statement to drop the table specialization since we just added this entity. Now we can use the migrate dev command. And then move the down file to the new corresponding directory. Note that, as expected, the up migration file is basically to create the table specialization. Let's jump to Prime Studio and check the new schema. Now, if the last migration had failed, we could apply the down migration using the command prisma migrate resolve. However, as the last migration was successful, we're gonna get an error if we try to run the migration resolve. And we can check the current status of our migrations. For that, we can use the command prisma migrate status. As you can see, we are all good here. So far, we have been using the migrate dev to add migrations, but we already know that this command must be used only for development environments. And if we want to run the migrations in production or in a test environment, in this case, we must use the command prisma migrate deploy. This command is usually used as part of a CI CD pipeline. It neither reset database nor rely on a shadow database. Let's try it. It's okay here because we don't have any pending migrations. And that's it for today. In the next video, we will continue to explore Prisma features and work with more complex data models. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your comments below. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.